Welcome to another CAD Dimensions Lunch and Learn. Today we're going to be talking about converting to sheet metal and my name is Derek Welker. So today we're going to be talking about how to convert to sheet metal using two different functions, using the convert to sheet metal tool and also using the tool insert bends and what goes along with that. So the first thing we're going to talk about today is the bend types available. So we have sharp bends, round bends, and flat bends. So these are the different bends that can come into SolidWorks that we can either convert or start from or anything like that. So a sharp bend is just going to be sharp corners and no radius. So if you were to make it with, with no bends or no corners at all and you were to bring it in, we can still convert that. We're just going to add on bends after the fact. Round bends, which are which would you would import or what would already be a sheet metal component, that's actually the easiest thing to convert. And then we have what is called the flat bends, which is just basically a, a blank with all of our sketch bends on there or our, our bend lines, and we can use those lines to to then bend it up. So the first tool we're going to be talking about is using convert to sheet metal. So using the convert to sheet metal tool, you can see that all we have to specify is a single face and and then we have to select our edges after the fact. So in our in our sheet metal parameters, we have the face that we need to select that's going to be our face that stays there. That's going to be the face that is uh, going to stay and then everything else is going to bend up and around it. We then specify the thickness of our component. It actually looks at the geometry you have, knows the thickness, so it will use the thickness of the geometry that you're using, assuming that it is a uh, uniform thickness part. We then specify the radius, and then we just have to specify the, the bend edges. Now, if we have a component that already has bends on it, we can use the collect all bends and it will work. In this case, because we do not have a part that already has bends on it, we have to specify which edges that we want. Moving into insert bends. Insert bends works exactly the same way as uh, convert to sheet, to sheet metal except for the fact that you don't need to specify bends. It takes those, um, it takes the sharp bends and just puts a radius on there. It's a little less um, user friendly in the fact that you don't actually visually see what's going on, but it is um, and another option to using the convert to sheet metal if you're having issues. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to run you through the the process of converting to sheet metal and using the insert bends, but then what we're going to talk about is if either of those tools don't work, how you can actually manually repair these SolidWorks or sheet metal parts so that you can convert them and you can work with them. So one thing we're going to talk about is deleting bends. It's it's one tool that I like to use a lot. It actually works works extremely well. And out of the years that I've been working here, it is probably the, the one that I have suggested the most and the one that I've used the most. We're going to talk about ripping the edges, which you'll see kind of convert to sheet metal does that, but with insert bends, you need to rip those edges before. Um, eliminate face-to-face -face contact because if you import a model into SOLIDWORKS and there is face-to-face -face contact, it will assume that they are together. So we need to actually split that up and work on it. And then just m removing features that interfere with edges or bends or anything like that. Sometimes features get in the way of an actual bend, so we might have to modify that. I'm not going to show that too much, but that should that should be a pretty... It should be a nice troubleshooting technique that if you run into something that maybe has a cut that's right on the bend, you might want to modify that a little bit. So let's hop over into SolidWorks and we're going to look at this part. So the, this part is an imported part. It does already have bends on it. In this case, I can use the convert to sheet metal. So I'm going to use the convert to sheet metal. I'm going to specify a face that I want to stay. So if I pick this face, doesn't matter if I pick this top face, this bottom face, this inside face, doesn't necessarily matter um, because it's going to convert it. It just depends on how it's going to be flattened. So what I can do here is I can now select to collect all bends. And you can see that it grabs these bends. It keeps the same default radius that we have on there, which is 13.29 millimeters, it's just a random size. And it keeps our thickness of being two millimeters and we hit OK. It doesn't visually look any different, but now we can actually flatten it. Right? And if we go back into our convert solid, we edit our feature. If we change the face from this face down here to this face over here, you can see when we hit OK and then flatten it, it flattens slightly different. It pushes all the rest of this away. So this stays fixed and then all the rest is um, pushed away from that when it's flattened. 
All right, so now I'm going to open up a component that does not have any bends in it. So it's going to be the same kind of shape, but it doesn't have any bends. I'm going to run import diagnostics. That's something you probably should do every time you open up one of these imported models. I like to turn on the edges so I can see what's going on. So this has no bends to it. So what we can do is we can do a convert to sheet metal. We specify our face. We say collect all bends, and it says no pre-made bends were found. Right? We know this because it doesn't have any bends on it. So what we have to do is now specify all of our different bends. You can see if I pick this bend before I pick this top one up here, it's going to tell me that it can't be done because we don't have an actual bend that goes down there. So I can do this, right? And we had to specify all of our bends and do that. Right? So it looks exactly the same as that other component. But if I go back and I do my insert bends, we have it on that same radius. We have our thickness. And we're just going to specify this face and hit OK. And you can see it does the same thing. So insert bends is almost, it's, it's really helpful when you know that everything's going to work out OK, but you don't want to go in and specify those actual bends because every time it runs into an actual corner, it just puts a bend there. So using the convert to sheet metal is a little bit more clunky in this approach. We're using the insert bends tool is a little bit helpful or a little bit more simple. So what I'm going to do is we're going to look at some other parts here. So the, another part we're going to look at is just um, just this part here. Now this is a, a big solid 3D model. It's not an actual sheet metal component, but we're going to use a sheet metal approach to um, create this into a sheet metal component. So what we're going to do is we're going to do convert to sheet metal. I'm going to select this bottom face here. Right? And I'm going to change this to maybe like 3 or 4 millimeters. And then our bend edges. If we try and collect it, we don't have any here. But what we can do is we can specify um, some of these bends here. When I hit OK, you'll see what happens. So even though we didn't start with a sheet metal-like component, we just started with a 3D model, um, we can actually use the convert to sheet metal from that. And uh, in the PowerPoint, I talked about there being rip sketches or ripping stuff. Um, what's going to happen is if I go into this convert to sheet metal, and I go to bring an additional edge on here, right? So I bring this edge and this goes all the way over, right? What I actually want it to do is I actually want to split that into two. I want to have it come off of this edge and stop right in the middle. And this is where we have this sketch in here. So if we go into this, this convert to sheet metal, we have what's called a rip sketch. So we can go in and say, okay, in this sketch where it's on the face, it's actually going to stop it. I know the preview is a little bit hard to see here, but you can see it comes off the bend and it stops here so that if we go into this bent edge, we can come over here and specify this edge and have it go all the way over. And you'll also see using the convert to sheet metal tool, you can see it goes in and it has these smart selections for rip edges. So what happens is, is when we go to bring this edge up and this edge up, we need to have a rip down this, this edge here so that it can actually be flat. Using the Convert to Sheet Metal tool, um, it actually does do these rips for us. Now if we were to use the Insert Bends tool, we would actually have to rip these edges beforehand. And I'll show you that in just a minute. So we go ahead and we click OK here. We have this nice component that is split there, so we used a rip sketch, and then we flattened it out. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to open up another component. I'm going to show you the difference when using um, when using convert to sheet metal and insert bends. So we're going to run import diagnostics. We do have a face that needs to fix. I'm going to go ahead and fix it, and then I'm going to turn on my edges here. So what you're going to see here is I'm going to do it two different approaches. We have the sheet metal component that has no rips in the edges, no bends, no nothing. Right? So if I go into my convert to sheet metal tool, I select this bottom face, I go to collect all bends. It doesn't actually work. But what you'll see is when I start adding on this edge and this edge, you can see that it, it puts a gap in here and adds that into our smart selection to rip. Right? And as we go in, we put on more of these bends you can see it rips all of this for us. All right, we can go ahead and hit OK here, and it works just fine. Now when we go in to do an insert bends, right, change this to 4, hit OK, 
and it says it can't work. So what we need to do is we need to actually go in and um, we need to rip out these uh, corners so that it works. So using the rip tool, we can go in and just specify these corners that we know are going to need to be ripped. Right, we ripped them a little bit and now we can use our insert bends tool to then insert these bends. So it says auto relief cuts were made, right? So now we have a sheet metal component from that. So using the convert to sheet metal tool is a little bit um, more user friendly for the fact that you can just specify which edges you want and it rips the ones that needs to. But using the insert bends tool can be a little bit helpful like in that first example I showed you, but it also is a little bit more clunky in the fact that you need to make sure that you rip these corners before you actually go in and do so. So now I'm gonna go and I'm gonna show you um, an interesting file of this cone shape. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna convert this to sheet metal um, and we're gonna make, because we don't actually have like a flat face to select, when we use our insert bends tool for this, we're just going to specify this outer edge here. So we're gonna select this edge, we're gonna go ahead and hit okay, right? It didn't visually change, but now we have a sheet metal and we can flatten it. Right, so when you're doing something like this that is a cone or a, uh, a cylinder or anything like that, all you need to do is you need to make sure that you have a small little gap. You use your insert bends tool and you specify one of these outside edges and then what it will do is it'll then convert for you. Right. So now we've talked about the, so far we've talked about the convert sheet metal tool and the insert bends. Now I'm gonna get into showing you some issues that you may run into when, um, trying to import stuff that doesn't actually work. So I'm gonna open up this component, I'm gonna run import diagnostics. There's no issues here. What we're gonna do is we're gonna take a look at, and you can see that we have some nice radiuses in here, so it's it's gonna be fairly, fairly straightforward. We're gonna do our convert to sheet metal. We're gonna specify this here. We're going to collect all bends. We have some bends, we just need to reverse the thickness. Right, so it does grab our radius that we have. Now we can see that the that the uh, preview is a little bit off, but look what happens when we go to convert it. Right, if we do like a side approach, you can tell that these bends aren't the way they should be. Let me go to a little bit, whoops, a little bit better of a view here. You can see, you can see that we have some bends that just that just don't look right. And it's because it was trying to mimic the bends that were already there. So if this came in, this came in as an imported, but say it came in and the bends were off or, or something like that, it does have some issues. So what we're going to do is we're going to undo this and I'm going to actually go in and I'm going to delete these bends. Now this is an approach I use in a lot of scenarios. I think it, it works really, really well um, and I have recommended it a lot. And what we do is if we go into the surfaces tool, there is delete face. If you do a delete and patch, what you do is you'll select both corners here, so the inside and the out. When you hit OK, it basically just deletes those bends and you're left with a component that doesn't have any. So now we can go in and we can use um, our insert bends tool, click OK, we have it on four millimeters, we hit OK. It puts in those bends and now we'll take a look at it. And you can see these ones look much better than they did before. So using that delete face tool, it worked really well because then we now have, we're now creating those bends instead of trying to mimic the bends that came in, maybe on a bad import or something like that. Um, so I'm just gonna hop back in. If you guys have any questions for me, please let me know. Um, but other than that, I think we are, I think I've covered almost everything that, I've want, that I wanted to cover today. If you have any questions, please let me know. Thank you for watching, and I hope to catch you on another launch. Don't forget to check us out on YouTube, Twitter, Facebook, and our blog for more great content by clicking on the links in the description below.